Hey guys, Matt here and welcome to lesson 2 of the Game Gengu Genki Grammar Series. So in this video we're going to cover all of the grammar that you're going to need to learn in the Genki textbook. This can help you both if you're studying by yourself, but also if you're studying for example in class at university. You can use these videos to help you learn all of the things you need to learn for class in a kind of fun way using real examples from Japanese video games. So by the end of this video you guys are going to have a really strong feel for exactly how to use each of these pieces of grammar. In today's video we're going to be covering a ton of language. We're going to be looking at kore, sore, are, dore, kono, sono, ano, dono, koko, soko, asoko, and doko, the very useful mo particle, noun janai desu, and finally the ne and yo sentence ending particles. So this is a pretty big lesson, we're going to learn a lot of really useful fundamental pieces of Japanese language. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and if you do consider liking, subscribing and even come join us on the Game Gengu Discord community on Patreon. So without further ado, let's learn some Japanese grammar. This is so first we have kore. Now this is the Japanese word for this, as in something that is close to the speaker. This. It's not connected to anything else, it's not connected to any nouns, it's just the word for this. So like seen here in Star Wars Lego, <laughs> we can see here with the lightsaber. What's this? This So we can see here that this in English is being used as kore. Kore wa? As for this, or in a little bit more natural way, what is this? So he's asking about this object. What is this mysterious object? The next piece of grammar is sore. So kore is when you're close to the speaker, and sore is when it's close to the listener. That. So we can actually see both used here in the example from Metal Gear Solid. Kore ga mokuteki nandaro. This is what you're after, right? So here, the speaker is the guy sitting down and he's referring to the thing that he's holding. So he says this, kore. However, snake is far away from the object and he's not sure what that object is that he's holding. And so he says, sore wa? What's that? So we can see the usage here where kore is when you're using when it's close to the speaker. And then sore is when you're talking about something that's close to the listener. And then there's one more that you use in Japanese when you're talking about something way, way over there. It's not close to the listener or the speaker. And that here is are. So like seen here again in Star Wars Lego, we can see we're talking about a planet really far away. So it's definitely not kore close to the speaker. It's definitely not sore close to the listener. It's way, way, way over there. And so that here is are. Are wa nan desu ka? What's that over there? Kore te dore desu ka? Mireba wakaru daro. And now finally if you want to use it in a question like you're asking which one, right? Kore ka kore, this or this, you would use dore which. And this is actually a really useful pattern to learn because as we'll see in this video, there's a lot of different pieces of language that use this same k the K sounding for this, sore, so for that, a for over there, and do for kind of a question, right? So you will see more in the next couple of examples. But here, dore is the question. Which one? Okay, so now we have the next stage of these four pieces of kore, sore, are, dore. And now, this is when we're wanting to use that this, but you're wanting to talk about it in relation to another noun. For example, this something, this pizza, this hat, right? And in that situation, you would not say kore pizza this pizza. That does not make sense, that sounds really weird caveman style speech. Instead, we actually need to use this other word, kono. So kore, just this. Kono is this something. So this is used when it's attached to another noun. So kono pizza, this pizza. Kono boshi, this hat. A little bit of tidbit to help you remember is the no particle is actually the possessive particle as we saw in the previous lesson. And this is used when you show that something is related, connected, kind of owned by the previous thing. This pizza, right? It 
it has ownership, right? It has connection. That's what the nor particle does. So that might help you remember these. When you see the no, kono, that means it's relation to the noun, this noun. So like seen here in Berserk, this battle. So kono ikusa, not kore ikusa, kono ikusa. The no particle here is required to connect. However, just be careful, this is a word by itself, kono, um, it's not ko plus no. <laughs> um, it might have that in the kind of historical sense when you look at the origin of the word itself, but for you, all you really need to know is just kono means this, and it's relation to a noun, this noun. So you might be able to guess what the next one's gonna be. Sono. So again, sore, but that something, so it's sono something. So like seen here in Attack on Titan, that way of speaking, ikata, sono ikata. So you would not say sore ikata, no, 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 never, never, never. It's sono ikata, that way of speaking. This sono connects it with the noun. So just like we had with kore and sore, kore is when talking close to the speaker, sore is talking close to the listener. It's the same thing here. Kono, close to the speaker, sono, close to the listener. So what do you think is the next word for over there? Are, ano. Beside the murada. Tabemono, are? Hato de ano ye de kuasa de So here again we can see the ah sound with no. Ano is that over there. Here in Final Fantasy X, Titus is asking where he can get something to eat, and Waka says, in that house over there, right? So we can see there's a house in the distance, not near the speaker or the listener, it's way down there in the road. Ano ie, that house over there. And then exactly same thing here with questions. If you want to say which something, instead of saying dore something, no, 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 just by itself is dore, but if you want to ask which noun, you use dono. So like seen here in Yakuza, which girl? Dono onna no ko. So if you're choosing between something, for example, Pokemon, dono Pokemon ga suki. Which Pokemon do you like? Darumasuka no kaze ga. And now the final usage of these four ko, so, a, and do, here we have used for places. Koko. Koko is here. So this place, you can almost see it translated like that. It's very much connected to the place that you're in. Koko wa doko. Where is this? Koko wa tottemo kirei desu. This place is very pretty. And the exact same rules apply that you saw previously, so hopefully you can guess what the next word is. Soko. There. So, like seen here in 13 Sentinels, there's a telephone box there. Soko ni denwa boksu aru yo. So here, soko is used because it's relatively close to the listener. It's just a couple of steps away. Now this one's a little bit different than what you may have expected. That over there, that place over there is asoko. So it's just like the previous soko, but it has the a in front of it. This is a little bit different from the previous examples that we saw. You may have thought it's ako, <laughs> but that's not the case. It's asoko, that place over there. So like seen here in 13 Sentinels, hey, over there, in that place over there, there's a person, right? Not looking too well, but we can see it's quite a far away away. The camera has to pan quite a distance to have a look. And so this is where you would use asoko, over there. And finally, if you want to use it in a question, we have doko. So again, that do sound, but it's with ko. Doko, where? what place. So here looking for a person and this guy's like, doko da, doko ni iru, where, where are you? So as we saw, we have kore for this, sore for that, are for that over there, and dore for which. And if we want to actually be specific with what we're talking about, this something, then instead of kore, we say kono, this something. 
その、that something、あの、that something over there、or dono、which something。And then finally with places、ここ、this place here、そこ、that place there、あそこ、that place over there、and どこ、where。ここが誰の庭だと思っている Next, we actually have a bit of an extension from some language that we learned in the previous lesson with the no particle. So we know that no is used with possession. And we can actually use it here with the word dare, who, with no, to show who's something. Dare no noun. Who's Pikachu? Dare no Pikachu. Or like seen here, who's garden? Dare no niwa. So, very simply, we have dare no, so dare who, no is showing possession, and then the noun, whose noun. Ne o ba chan, dare no hakamari o shteiru no? Or like seen here in Boku no Natsu Yasumi, dare no o hakamari. So, here, o hakamari is to visit a grave, and whose grave are you visiting? Dare no o hakamari o shteiru no? Whose grave are you visiting? So here we can see the dare no something is whose something. Onto ga? Onto des. Just wait. So, what is it? Is it a dare no mail? Er, I will go. Next, we have the very useful mo particle. And this is very, very simple in the way that it's used. It means to, also, or as well. And this actually replaces the wa particle in a sentence, the ga particle, or the o particle. So, for example, if I wanted to say, I'm Matt, watashi wa matto desu, or watashi wa matto. Well, if you're also Matt, you could say, watashi mo matto desu, or watashi mo matto. So, here you simply just replace the wa particle with mo to express also. Now, this can be translated both as I'm also Matt, or I'm Matt too, or I'm Matt as well, right? So they're very, very similar usages of translation. Sometimes one will fit more than the other. I personally use、um, also quite a lot when I use translation.、Um, some people might use too, like you may see in your textbook, too here is being expressed in the textbook. However,、um, I feel also works as well. So for example, Watashi mo iku. I'll go too. Or I'll also go. Very much the same sentence. So, like seen here, I'm also tired. I will also fight, or I'll fight too. Here we see it used twice in a sentence. O t o s a n mo, kimi mo. So here it would be a bit weird to say, your father too, you too, or your father also, you also. It's a little bit unnatural in English. So here I've actually translated it as your father and you also. Or for example, also you and your father. Nah, one mo izo manai. Sensei mo sore de i ka. Now, sometimes you might actually feel that in a translation it's not necessarily to or also, like seen here in Fire Emblem, ore mo is on one nine. So you could say, I also don't have any objections, or you can say, I don't have any objections either. Now, actually, there's a little bit more information that's going to be covered later in lesson four of the Genki textbook. However, I feel it's really important to cover it right now、um, because it's really not that difficult. And you're probably wondering already what do we do with the ni particle and the de particle? So, just very, very, very quickly,、um, we will actually cover this later again in chapter four. But just so you know, you can actually use mo with the ni particle and the de particle, where with the wa particle, Ga and o, you would replace it completely. Simply with the ni or the de particle, you just follow the particle with mo. To express to also do that thing. So, for example, like here, also go to the toilet. Toire ni mo iku. So, you wouldn't replace the ni with mo, you would follow the ni with mo. This is because the ni particle is very important with expressing direction. And so if you get rid of it, then there's some information that's missing from the sentence.
word. Same thing here with de. De is used to show the place of an action. So like here, kaisha de mo. That means also at the company or also at the office. So you wouldn't say kaisha mo dun 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 when you're doing an action at the office because that information will get lost if you drop the de particle. So you need to have it followed the de particle, de mo, also at the office. You might do some action. So we learnt in lesson one how to say something is something. For example, watashi wa matto desu. I am mat. Kore wa pizza desu. This is pizza. However, if you want to say this in a negative sense, I am not mat, or this is not a pizza, instead of using des, we would replace that with janai, or Janai des, if you're wanting to be polite. So this means is not. So for example, Watashi wa matto janai des. I'm not Matt. <laughs> Maybe I'm a mysterious imposter. Or for example, this is not pizza. Kore wa pizza janai des. This is not pizza. And as you saw, you can actually just drop the des if you don't want to be polite, right? So Watashi wa matto janai. I'm not Matt. That's fine. Um, it just feels not quite as polite. Des makes the sentence polite. Just a quick tidbit of information for those who are curious. Janai actually comes from dewanai. Um, that's the more formal way of saying this. So this is a more colloquial version of saying it. So janai stems from dewanai. Oi, koisa dare da? Ie, watashi no team no mono dewa arimasen. Dare da? So for example, if I wanted to be really, really formal, the casual way, I'm not Matt, watashi wa matto janai. Or if I wanted to be really formal, watashi wa matto dewa arimasen. So this is the much more formal way of speaking. But don't worry about that, the one that you're going to be using a lot here is janai, or janai desu. So like seen here, this is not the time to talk like that. So, sonna koto iteru bai janai. So by here is like a time or situation. So it's not the time, it's not the situation to be saying such a thing. It's not like that. It's not normal. We are not your enemy. Teki janai. Simply follow a noun with janai to say that it's not that noun. And finally, we have two really useful sentence ending particles to help make your Japanese sound really natural. So the first one here is ne. And this is super common, in fact, there's even songs just called ne. <laughs> um, and this in Japanese means right. Now the function of this piece of language is actually to seek the listener's confirmation or agreement with something. Kind of like, right? Pizza's really delicious, right? The same way in English where we have that right, you would say, pizza oishii ne. So just like we see here, o hisashiburi desu ne. It's been a long time. Hasn't it? It's been a long time, right? You guys are really strong, huh? So this ne is kind of getting confirmation. It's making her sound a little bit more friendly. Instead of just saying, you guys are really strong. That's a little bit strong, like she's like exclaiming something. But if she kind of says here with desne, it makes it a little bit softer. Makes it quite a softer sentence. Wow, you guys are really strong, huh? You're in the middle of work right now, aren't you? You're a great mother, aren't you? And it's already pretty late at night, isn't it? Finally, we have the yo particle, and this is used at the end of a sentence to really add emphasis to something. Like you're trying to teach someone something, like you better listen, hey listen to what I'm saying, kind of like I tell you. 
So you're really adding emphasis to something. It's very much like a strong exclamation mark. So like seen here in 13 Sentinels, uh, this girl's trying to hide something. And so she's trying to assure the other person that it's an alarm clock, that mysterious thing that she's hiding. And so she says, Mezumashi doke nan desu yo? So that yo is kind of being really, really strong. It's an alarm clock, I tell you. Come on, believe me, that type of thing. And so, like here again, he says, it would be meaningless. Muri desu yo. So, muri desu is just, it would be meaningless. But muri desu yo, it adds emphasis and emotion to the sentence. Like, it would be completely meaningless, I tell you. So just listen, right? Listen to what I'm saying. That's what the yo does. It really grabs attention. <laughs> so like here again, this girl's concerned about this guy and she's like, are you okay? And he says, oh, of course I am, right? So he adds this yo to the end of this sentence just to add that kind of assertion, to add that level of confidence and add that level of exclamation to it. Of course I tell you. So it's kind of reassuring. Again in an Attack on Titan. I'm all right, I tell you. So maybe, you know, they were asking, are you okay? And they say, I'm totally fine. And then finally here in uh, Lego Star Wars, again, Jar Jar Binks is saying, it was an accident, I tell ya. <laughs> so here that, that I tell ya is the your part. That was an accident, I tell ya. <laughs> uh, so very Jar Jar Binks type of sentence right there. <laughs> So you can see that the your particle is used to add this level of emphasis, assertion, kind of really trying to convince someone of a certain situation or thing. So that's it for lesson two of the Game Gengo Genki Grammar series. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you've managed to learn some grammar, perhaps make it a little bit more easier for you guys to remember, or if at the very least made it a little bit more fun to learn some of these things. So you can use this video series just for your own self-study, quickly cram for a test, or even just to quickly review something. Perhaps you wanna you know, get a little bit of a reminder of all the stuff that you learned in this lesson. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. If you like this kind of video, then consider joining us on Patreon. These kind of videos take a huge amount of time to edit, find examples, put it all together, get it all looking nice and neat and tidy and professional. It's a huge amount of work. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel, then consider joining us on Patreon. We have a fantastic growing community on the Game Gingo Discord community. So if you want to come join us, then feel free to join and say hello. I'm always happy to have a chat. And we have a lot of people that help learn Japanese, geek out with their favorite video games, even helping get advice about things to do with Japan. We have a bunch of people in our community you know, who actually live in Japan and work here. It's a fantastic community to help you learn Japanese with. I'm always hanging around, so if you need to contact me anytime, feel free to contact me there on Discord. So thank you so much, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and as always, I'll see you all in the next video. See ya.